Now that we've established that arrays are objects in JavaScript, you can embed objects in objects, so arrays inside of arrays. But why would you want to embed arrays or objects inside of objects? What's the purpose? Well, the purpose is you're going to need to know this stuff when you create more advanced applications. And what you should do whilst learning this is keep an open mind and think about all the different types of applications and try to structure those applications. So the best one is the graphics editor again. I have a canvas and on that canvas, I have many images. Okay, well, that's fine. However, our program can have many canvases. How do we organize that data? Well, you have objects inside of objects. You have the parent object, which is the canvas, and then you have the child objects, which are the images and so forth that are placed on the canvas. That's excluding all of the other things to do with the program, such as you're going to need another set of functions in another object somewhere to deal with the layers and deal with the interface interaction. And also what about all the filters you can apply to an image and all the rest of it. This then becomes very apparent in our minds that object structure is everything to a programmer. If you don't break your application down, it can't be one massive object. You've got to break it down, break it down and break it down as much as you can without it being ineffective. There are certain points where you can break your program down and it becomes ineffective. However, if you can break your application down into sensible bite-sized pieces, you will then become a fantastic programmer. So first of all, let's take a look at creating a simple array to give our minds a quick refresher. Again, whenever you create an array, if you just create an array in and of itself, you won't be able to reference that array. It will effectively be anonymous. We don't want anonymous arrays. We want to stick that array into a box so we can find that box at a later date or variable. So I first of all want to declare that I want to create a new variable. And what I want to do is give this variable a name. So we'll call it embed. And I want to assign a value to this variable, put something in the box. So it's not only going to create the box, initialize the box, it's also going to assign a value once that box has been created. So I'm going to open and close my square brackets, which don't forget means an array literal. It literally means we're defining an array. Then we can start adding data in here. So I can say hello and also goodbye. If I wanted to then pull out an element within that array, I target the array and then I put in the square brackets and in the square brackets, I define the index of the element that I want to pull out. So again, we start at zero and then go up from there. So if I wanted to pull out goodbye, I would say one like so. And also I could say zero to pull out hello because zero is the index of the first element. Also, please do note that you don't have to necessarily put anything in your array. You can actually define an empty array like so. So what I'm going to do is target that box. I'm going to replace its value. So delete that array that's in there at the moment and just pop in an empty array. And now when I type in embed, you'll notice that we just get an empty array returned and then your program can start to dynamically add data into that array but that's for a later lecture let's clear the console because now it's time to take a look at embedding arrays inside of arrays so now i'm going to target that box that i previously created and i'm going to delete whatever is inside of that box and place something new into that box which is going to be another array so i'm going to pop in the square brackets which don't forget is the array literal because we're literally defining an array i'm going to pop in a string we're just going to say hello pop in a number let's say 20 and then also i'm going to define an array so how do we define an array inside of an array? Well, it's very simple. Open and close those square brackets. Wherever you want to create an array, just open and close your square brackets and you will define an array literal, which literally means we're creating an array. And then finally, I'll add in one last value, which is end. So I'll pop in that string right there. But now we have an empty array. Let's put something into that array. I'm just going to say embedded and i'm also going to put in a number let's say 999 okay so now i've defined four elements in the parent array 
a parent has four elements. Hello has the index of zero. 20, which has the index of one. The embedded array, which has the index of two. And end, which has the index of four. So we're still working with the same zero index system. And when I hit return, Google Chrome does something quite nice, which it allows me to view that element. And it also allows me to view how many elements are in the embedded array. So if I press the down arrow, you can clearly see what's embedded inside of there. So how do I, let's say, target this end string? Well, it's very simple. Again, it's just zero index, zero, one, two, and then three. So I can say embed, I target the main box that contains our array, and then I type in three into the square brackets, which will fetch the third element out of the array. Now let's go one step further. How do I target my embedded array? Again, very simple, zero, one, two. So this is classed as an element inside of the array. So I'm gonna say embed, and then I'm gonna pop in the number two. And you'll notice when I hit return, what it did was it said, okay, we're gonna grab this box, we're gonna look inside of it, and we're gonna see, ah, okay, there's a main array here. And he wants to pull out the second element within that array. So it goes zero, one, two, and it fetches the embedded array. Perfect. But now what we can do is in fact fetch an element out of the embedded array by adding in another set of square brackets. So let's say, first of all, I want to get out the embedded string. Well, I can simply target the array the embedded array, just like I did before, add in another set of square brackets because now we're looking at this embedded array and JavaScript goes, ah, we have an embedded array here. Again, it starts at zero. So the zero based index starts all over again in an embedded array. So don't make the mistake that it's somehow attached to the parent indexing system, it's not. The parent array has its own index and the embedded array has its own index and they all start from zero. So zero is embedded and one is 99. So I can again just define that number zero and you'll notice we get the embedded string. So we first target the array, the embedded array, then JavaScript goes, aha, they've targeted that. And then what we do is we say what element we want to pull out of that embedded array which we're pulling out the zero element, which is the string embedded. And there you go. And you can go even further than that. Let's go ahead and clear out of the console. And just very quickly, I'm just gonna press the up arrow a couple of times to go back through the history. And what I want to do is add in another array. So now we're gonna go two levels deep and we're gonna, again, create another array. And then let's say I wanna put in a number 200 and I'll put in the string final. If I hit return, it's going to create the parent array, which it has done right here. There's the parent array. And again, it's on a zero based index. So zero, one, two, and then three. And if I wanna target that inner array, we go zero, one, two. So I'm gonna target that embedded array by first of all, targeting the box that stores the parent array. And then once we've targeted that parent array, we want to target the element with the index of two. So we go zero, one, two. And so JavaScript is gonna say, ah, so we're targeting an element within the main parent array. And this embedded array has three elements within it. So when I hit return, it's going to return again that embedded array. Now what I want to do is target the next array which contains the number 200 and a string final. So I can go ahead and say target that embedded array, then go grab this array. Again, the indexing system starts back at zero. So we go zero, one, two. So I'll put in another two again, and you'll notice it pulls out that array, which in turn has two elements inside of it. And again, the zeroing indexing system goes again. Zero is 200 and one is the string final. So I can, again, just retype this. Now I'm targeting this array. I can say, well, pull out, let's say the string final. So I say zero, one. 
So I pull out the element with the index of one, which is the string final. So we've gone now and you can keep going further and further and further with arrays and come up with really complex structures. How far you want to go with this is up to you. But let's just have a quick recap. First of all, we target the main box, which contains our main array. Next up, we look inside of that array and we grab the element with the index of two. So zero, one, two. Now we're targeting our embedded array. Then once we're looking at this array, we can target an element within it. And so what I did was I said target the element with the index of two, which we're here now. Then we go down, down, down. Ah, there it is. And JavaScript goes, aha, this is an array. Let's open that up. Now we're looking inside of this array. Then finally, we said one, which just go down, zero is 200, one is final. Really easy, really simple. And also let's do one final thing, which is just pull out the lengths of each array. So don't forget that each array has a length property that tells us how many elements are in the array. So I can see this array has three elements, one, two, three. And please do remember the length property is not zero index. So it will say this is one, two, and three. It just tells you the number of elements in the array. So what I can go ahead and do is first of all, target the main parent array by targeting the box that stores it and then saying dot length. Put in an ending semicolon right there and you'll notice it says four. So we have four, one, two, three, and four. Then I can target the embedded array. So zero, one, two. Now don't forget we're targeting this time so it's zero indexed. So I can say embed and in square brackets say two. That's now targeting this array right here. And then we're gonna say dot length. So I'm accessing the length property of this embedded array and it's giving me the value of three, as you can see right here. And then what I can do is now that I'm targeting this array again, I can target the subarray. So I can say embed two in square brackets. And then now that I'm looking inside of this array, put the value of two in and you can see zero, one, two, because we're targeting zero indexed. There's our array. And then we can access the length property of this array. And don't forget a property is a noun, it's descriptive. And this noun is describing how many elements make up the array. So we say dot length and it should return the value of two, which is 200 and final. There are two elements in this array. So I hit return, boom, we get the value of two. So there you have it. Now what I want you to do is really play about with this. And if you have the Chrome console, really follow along with this and start expanding those inner arrays and see if you can go one level further. And if you can go one level further, keep going, keep going, keep going, because what that will eventually do is make you really good at accessing information in arrays. However, having very, very complex array structures can become very tiresome very quickly, especially for developers. Trying to establish what embed brackets to brackets to brackets one returns is very, very difficult. So we need something more descriptive. We need a more descriptive object.